Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be doing an introduction to analysis, sequences, and limits. We're about to switch gears from algebra to analysis, specifically real analysis, which focuses on the rigorous treatment of calculus. One of the fundamental ideas of real analysis is the concept of a limit, often first encountered through the study of sequences. A sequence in math is a list of numbers that often follow a pattern. In real analysis, we're particularly interested in the limit of sequences if they exist. The limit of a sequence is a value that the sequence gets arbitrarily close to as we consider more and more terms in the sequence. That's such a great definition, by the way. All right, new questions. Let's consider the following sequences. Number one, the sequence a n, where a sub n equals one over n. By the way, I just want to make a side comment that it's pretty cool that ChatGPT is giving me the notation on how I should write these sequences while ChatGPT provides the questions themselves. So the sequence one over n for each natural number n and the sequence b sub n where b sub n equals negative one to the n for each natural number n. And for each sequence, answer the following. Is the sequence bounded and does the sequence converge? So both sequences are bounded. One over n is bounded from zero to one. My answer is gonna be zero is less than one over n which is less than or equal to one for all natural numbers n. So one over n is bounded. For part b, the sequence does converge. It converges to the number zero because the denominator increases without bound. For the second sequence, the sequence alternates between positive one and negative one, which is still bounded. Negative one is less than or equal to negative one to the n, which is less than or equal to one for all natural numbers n. So the sequence is bounded. However, the second sequence does not converge specifically because the values alternate between negative one and one. If we look at the definition of the limit of a sequence, the limit of a sequence is a value that the sequence gets arbitrarily close to. So from the definition, there is no one value that the sequence gets arbitrarily close to as we consider more and more terms in the sequence. That's because they alternate between negative one and one. Next, I'm gonna make a meta comment. I'm gonna want to add another section that I think would be really useful here. Add another section called next topics where you provide different topics that could be great for the next video if i don't select any topics in my responses then please choose one for me so this will give me some flexibility in how the conversation moves forward sometimes i might not feel like real analysis and sometimes i might not feel like linear algebra so i would like to have some flexibility in what is being taught to me let's see how ChatGPT responds you've correctly identified the properties of both sequences for a sub n, as n grows larger and larger, one over n gets closer and closer to zero, so it converges to zero. On the other hand, b sub n oscillates between negative one and one with no particular value it approaches, so it does not converge. Feedback, great job, your answers were spot on. The concepts of boundedness and convergence are important in understanding sequences, and it seems like you have a firm grasp on these concepts. Nice. Progress, you've shown an excellent understanding of sets, relations, algebraic structures like fields and rings, and more recently, vector spaces. We've now begun exploring real analysis, starting with sequences and their limits. Your analysis of the two given sequences was accurate, demonstrating your understanding of these fundamental concepts in real analysis. Next, before we move on to the next video, I want to peek ahead to see if these next topic sections are working like I wanted to. So next topics, the concept of compactness in topology, calculus of variations, measure theory and Lebesgue integration, Fourier series and Fourier transforms, and the complex plane and complex functions. Wow, this class is moving very quickly. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.